Hello, everyone. Um, thanks a lot for, for attending this talk. Um, I, I'm really, really happy to be here and being able to, to um, tell you more about this topic, which I think it's, uh, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating time now for, for everyone involved in, um, in European technologies and, and open source uh, in general, globally. But um, all the uh, changes and all the initiatives that we've seen in Europe, I think it's worth uh, sharing that with, uh, with all of you. Um, okay, so just a, a very brief introduction. So, um, well, my name is Alberto Marti and the VP of uh, Open Source Community Relations at Open Nebula. There you have my, my email if you want to follow up this talk with, um, with uh, a message or another, another question. Um, I live in, in, in Eastern Spain, um, quite a sunny place. Um, that's a small village in, in Alicante. So thanks to cloud computing, I'm able to, to join you virtually today. So um, I'm sure you're all more than familiar with the, with the term, but it's good. Um, it's worth having a, um, um, a quick review or taking a, a, a few, just a couple of minutes to review what we understand as edge computing or what some people understand as uh, edge computing. Because um, they might be fair, you might come across different definitions and different implications as well in terms of, uh, of technologies and infrastructures. So um, um, I'm sure you are more than familiar with all the different um, reports and pieces of news that have come up in the in the last uh, few years about the impact that edge computing is going to have in in technology in, in uh, cloud computing specifically, like this uh, change of paradigm that sometimes referred to. Um, what we're seeing, I think, since 2020 probably is like uh, this kind of uh, buzzword that uh, was uh, has been around for a while was actually becoming uh, um, a real a real thing. And we've seen a number of technologies emerging and a number of really uh, high impact projects uh, taking place or at least being planned uh, to take place um, uh, shortly. Um, so edge computing uh, has a number of challenges um, in terms of also of that kind of definition about what edge computing is and what it implies. Um, here you have um, a concept that's been used increasingly uh, now in, in Europe, which is this idea of um, a cloud edge continuum, or uh, sometimes I like to call it the data center cloud edge IoT continuum. I know it's a long, it's a long term, but actually what we're talking here is about um, aggregating different kinds of infrastructures and uh, the, 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 the tricky thing here is that the, the edge means different things for different people. So at some point, it, uh, for some people, it might mean that the actual, what we know as the far edge, so something that's on board a, a, a train or a plane and actually moving around. Um, for some of the people, uh, the edge, from their perspective, from the data center, the traditional private cloud, could be simply um, um, some, some resources on a utility network or a mini local data center in some in some specific locations where they need to deploy some workloads. So you, you come across different different definitions. Obviously, as, as well, the, the on-premise edge is, is gaining uh, more uh, relevance nowadays as well, deploying small um, amounts of resources, infrastructure resources on-premise by a service provider or by the owner of those premises directly to, to manage the, the workloads and the, the kind of dynamic demands in, in virtualization, for instance. So as you see, there are a number of concepts here. Um, and one of the challenges in, in, in Europe specifically it has to do with um, taking advantage of all these deployments, all these infrastructures and building something around this, building something that can actually leverage all these different kinds of infrastructures and uh, move your workloads seamlessly from one place to another, avoiding vendor locking and other risks, as we'll, as we'll, we'll mention in a second. As you all know, um, there are a number of uh, really uh, interesting initiatives taking place um, in different regions of the world and globally, so the Linux Foundation Edge, for instance, um, with uh, a number of uh, related um, events and, and initiatives as well. There's the Edge Native uh, Working Group at the Eclipse Foundation, and then a number of uh, events have been taking place uh, or are taking place regularly in different parts of the world about edge computing. 
And what we see in those places and those for, for us is this um, kind of increasingly uh, practical implementation of uh, what we understand as edge computing, in a sense, becoming real world uh, use cases and applications. Um, in terms of the uh, the benefits that edge computing brings to the table, um, I'm sure you you come from some of these sectors. You know the the impact that edge computing is, is having or is expected to have in the in the short term. We're talking about deploying low or ultra low latency applications and improving user experience. Things like um, service availability, reducing risk and data transfers, reducing energy as well. Also, we'll talk about um, the uh, concept of vendor dependency and, and how edge computing is seen specifically in Europe as a way to maybe try to foster and, and, uh, uh, the emergence of a local, a, a more relevant uh, kind of uh, local ecosystem of, of infrastructure providers and bring some balance to the to the cloud market. And the use cases and the applications we see, um, some of them are more. Uh, clear than others, but uh, in sectors like gaming or broadcasting, 5G, Internet of Things, uh, smart cities, for instance, or virtual desktop uh, infrastructure, we're seeing edge computing being uh, perceived and adopted as a, as a, as a really uh, impactful technology there. So what's the uh, European perspective on, on all these uh, changes that we are seeing in the market? Um, it's it's a it's a bit peculiar. So and it, and it comes also from the the nature of the of the European Union, the way the continent is organised politically as well, and the impact that the COVID uh, pandemics has had on the on the countries in the uh, in the Union. Um, um, and also, as um, expressed by the uh, the 2020 and the reviewed new industrial strategy for Europe, this kind of um, long-lasting kind of dependencies and um, issues that have been around for a while, but has been now exacerbated by the by the pandemic. These are some of the of the issues that the European Commission, for instance, has identified as, as, as really important to to be addressed in the near future and in, in the next few years. Um, one of them is the uh, this kind of low rate in in adopting cloud technologies by European companies. And there you have some figures for that: thirty six percent of European companies uh, using cloud services in twenty twenty, but mainly for for simple simple services. This is seen as uh, something that's um, jeopardizing the uh, European efforts to to undertake a green and digital transformation in the continent and also to adopt this new the new um, artificial intelligence and data economy another main issue in europe as well is the well small i would say the tiny market share for for european actors for european cloud service providers as compared with the um with uh, with non-european uh, hyperscalers for instance so as you see, a very small percentage of revenues for the European market for the for the cloud providers um, from Europe. This is creating um, increasingly higher entry barriers for other companies, other providers that want to to uh, try to share that market or share that the, the growth in that in the, in the public cloud market, for instance, and forcing them or making them unable an, an, an to compete with the with the with hyperscalers. In, in fact. Um, an interesting aspect as well is the, the investment gap that has been identified by the European authorities around, well, um, 11,000 million euros annually. That's the gap that the, that the Europe should put um, every year if they want to compete kind of in, in similar terms with the, with the US and China in terms of investment in cloud technologies. And also, uh, one of the things that is, that's uh, slowing down that adoption of cloud of the cloud is the um, the concerns among many companies and individuals, but also governments in Europe, to use technologies that are non-European, basically um, public cloud and the main public cloud providers, for instance. And that has to do with um, concerns about cybersecurity, uh, protection of uh, data, things like data sovereignty, for instance, and also a number of laws that apply to, as you know. Um, for instance, US-based uh, providers. So um, the Commission, the the European authorities are they are taking an increasingly explicit approach and, and a kind of say a kind of aggressive approach um, 
um, against this this situation. That's something that in several declarations of different levels, um, and for a number of years, they have identified as uh, something that has to be fixed. Um, starting with uh, President uh, Ursula von der Leyen um, before taking office, um, she clearly said that uh, there was a need to, if not to compete against the hyperscalers, at least to achieve Europe's technological sovereignty in some other areas that was that were maybe available for for this kind of more balanced um, competition. Um, that's also what this um, industrial strategy has identified, a, a number of opportunities for Europe to regain autonomy or technological um, control about the, um, the, the, the cloud technologies and other key technologies that are now emerging. Um, edge computing has been explicitly identified as one of those technologies that can bring some some uh, some balance to the to the market and then strengthen Europe's capabilities uh, and technologies to be able to to uh, again bring some balance to what's seen as a deeply imbalanced situation. Um, with things like uh, or this kind of expectations of, of data being processed. Um, 80% of data being processed at the edge, as opposed to the current situation where 80% of data is, is processed uh, in the cloud. That is seen as an opportunity for you to kind of catch up in terms of, uh, of what's going on with the, um, with the technological dependencies and the main actors in the market. Because as you know, uh, no main actor is now dominant in, in edge computing. So that's kind of an, an open door for, for uh, uh, Starting kind of this uh, this competition, not from scratch, obviously, but uh, um, from a more leveled um, situation. The idea here is that um, Europe can actually try to leverage a number of the strengths um, in the continent, things like industrial IoT, five um, G networks, and then some investments and initiatives by telco uh, companies. Um, the idea is to um, work towards a solution that brings a multi cloud alternative to what's now seen as, a, as, a, as an environment where uh, hyperscalers are in fact using kind of proprietary solutions and establishing these proprietary solutions as de facto standards. So the alternative for that, and this is an interesting, the first mention to, to open source, that multi-class solution that Europe um, um, envisions as a, as a tool to kind of um, level the, the ground here, is seen or is suspected to be open source. While these discussions are taking place at, at the European level, of course, um, hyperscalers are, are also uh, positioning themselves. Um, and one of the things they're doing is trying to obviously expand that domination that they have in the cloud market also to the edge, obviously. I mean, that was um, quite clear that, that that move was going to take place. How it's taking place in Europe is, is, is quite interesting as well, because the, um, one of the main efforts by, by um, hyperscalers, non-European hyperscalers in, in, in Europe, for instance, goes through um, a number of agreements with, uh, with telecommunication companies, for instance, um, things like AWS Wavelength and, and others. Um, so um, in this in this model, kind of hybrid model, what they do is they typically they um, incorporate their physical infrastructure into the networks and the facilities of the of the telecom company and the telecom operators, specifically five G operators. That's uh, that's a, a kind of a trend now. Um, in this way, they the the the, the, the five G operator can very quickly offer edge resources to the customers and their um, their devices, but those uh, those resources, those physical resources, are in the end managed and monetized uh, normally through the platforms of those hyperscalers. So it's, it has some pros and cons, but it's an interesting model and a challenging model from from that perspective, that kind of the uh, the European perspective about uh, the potential of edge computing. Um, Following with that concept, that idea that um, actually um, wh whoever controls the this edge infrastructure, the edge nodes, will have an advantage to to um, control the market. 
Um, the European Commission has recently identified in March this year, uh, publishing this uh, the, the digital compass, what it's called the digital compass, so the objectives for the digital transformation of Europe uh, by 2030. One of the main targets in that policy is uh, this expectation of this uh, objective of having 10,000 climate neutral, highly secure edge nodes deployed across the continent uh, by 2030. Um, needless to say, I mean, this is not just going to be public investment, this is going to be a combination of uh, public funding, but also a, a commitment from, from private investors, for instance, and, and telecommunication companies to deploy this new infrastructure across the continent. And some, some of them, like uh, Deutsche Telekom in Germany, for instance, they are making a really heavy efforts to have this, these nodes deployed uh, across the territory and managed centrally and, and available for the customers to use. Again, this is a document and a policy that highlights this uh, uh, non-ideal uh, situation in which Europe is dependent uh, and increasingly dependent on non-European uh, technologies. As I mentioned at the beginning, that's also been exacerbated by the by the pandemic, by the uh, uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, the digital compass identifies again the edge as one of those technologies that is going to be crucial for for this transformation and for the future of the continent, in at different levels, not just uh, in terms of um, bringing some some material benefits to the to the users and the companies, things like latency, for instance, but also in terms of reducing energy consumption and and. Uh, well, um, working towards the, the, uh, the achievements or the objectives also of the so-called Green Deal in Europe for the green transformation. Um, just uh, to give uh, just an example of this, uh, to quantify this, this commitment by the European Union, here you have this, uh, this figure, the Recovery and Resilience Facility, which is the main funding for helping the continent go out of the crisis after the, the pandemic. 20% of that, um, that budget is expected to, to support this, uh, this transformation, this digital transformation. So um, these kind of movements, uh, well, th these ideas and these uh, concepts have been uh, around for a while. Um, uh, it is now that we see that these policies are actually being, uh, well, not enforced, but at least uh, having some kind of real implications in terms of the projects that are being funded and the, the budget has been allocated for the, some of these uh, initiatives. It was back in, in October 2020 already that the, uh, the different the 27 mem EU member states uh, decided to, to start working together among them and also with the European authorities to to bring that um, to the um, to make to make it a reality to to, to build that ne next generation cloud and, and edge uh, um, infrastructure for for Europe and again an emphasis here on on open source standards in this case to to build that and also always that emphasis on, on interoperability that's also an important element in, in that kind of general multi cloud and edge computing approach that uh, Europe Europe is taking. Um, well, as I mentioned, um, the number of commitments here, if, uh, you can see some of the figures, um, the commitment from, from member states as well to, to co-fund um, some of the projects and initiatives that are going to require public uh, funding during this uh, next uh, decade. Uh, also published in, in uh, autumn uh, 2020 was the uh, European Commission's open source strategy. And that's, uh, that's an interesting document as well. Um, it uh, obviously well, it comes with, it's not the first document that the European Union mentioned in open source or, or kind of uh, defining some kind of more or less abstract uh, objectives about the adoption of open source. It's not the first one, as I said. But um, it's, it's more explicit in the way open source is perceived by European authorities as a tool also for Europe to, to uh, get to that kind of uh, ideal or more, um, more, more balanced uh, situation in which um, Europe is digital, digital, uh, uh, di Europe's digital autonomy is kind of uh, becoming a reality. 
Um, among those elements that the, uh, the Commission identifies as one of the benefits of open source is uh, obviously that approach to, to, cloud com to cloud computing, to being able to leverage open source to build this new approach to cloud computing and also um, edge computing as a consequence. Um, a, a few months ago, um, at the, at the Open Source uh, Lisbon event, for instance, the, uh, the internal market commissioner, Thierry Breton, uh, again verbalized this, uh, at least um, um, in paper, or in this case, uh, verbally, this commitment from the Commission to, and this perception of the Commission that open source is going to be actually very, very important for, for Europe to, to gain that kind of the digital sovereignty or I would say kind of fight for their, their, their digital sovereignty. Um, they have some of the declarations and um, you'll, you'll be able to, to have a look at the, at the, at the link if you want to, to listen to the whole declaration. But um, what is Europe actually doing beyond declarations? And then that's, uh, that's uh, an interesting thing to, to review quickly now in, in just uh, five minutes. So, um, what is Europe doing and why it is a good time for open source companies um, to join these efforts? Well, the first thing um, is the Horizon Europe program. It is, is the uh, pluriannual research and innovation programs of the of the European um, uh, Union. And they are starting this year and they're going to run till 2027. So there will be a number of calls for con for companies and basically in the form of, uh, of consortiums between private companies and, and research organizations to um, implement some of these some of these projects, a number of projects. Specifically, in terms of um, cloud and edge computing, there are going to be a number of calls. There are some calls that are open now, like the meta operating system for the for the future um, European platform for the edge. The names are normally quite are quite interesting themselves, but the um, the, the projects um, are going to be running for for several years. We're talking about projects that normally run for three years with uh, different levels of funding. Some of these projects might have um, a budget of you know, maybe 12, 15 projects, and, and we're talking about funding for different different consortium and different projects. If you look at the, at the details of some of these, these projects, and if you are if you're a, a European company or from, a, or from an associated country that can join this, this program, I invite you to, to have a look at the programs and look at the, for other, other partners, and, and uh, be careful and identify those calls in which actually open source is uh, something that's going to be valued by the reviewers. That's going to be, uh, give you some, some competitive advantage there. That's not the only initiative that's taking place now, which uh, open source companies are expected to play an important role and are we're welcome to join. Um, there's another uh, larger scale high impact project going on now in Europe of, or a in the form of a proposal that's been, being prepared by the Commission or with the assistance of the European Commission um, and coordinated by 11 um, member states led by Germany and France. It's called the Important Project of Common European Interest on Next Generation Cloud Infrastructure and Services. Again, um, very easy um, to remember names. Um, this is an interesting one because this is going to um, uh, explicitly support, uh, as, as mentioned in the, in the objectives of this project, they're going to support the development of European open source technologies. And they're expected to, to fund and support developments that are based on open source frameworks. So again, we see an increasingly strong and explicit support from not only European uh, authorities, but also from, from member states to work together and use open source and, and open standards as a common base for, for these new technologies and, and projects that are going to be developed at the European level. So that's, that's good news. This is in line with a uh, number of private initiatives and uh, efforts from different companies in Europe to push for uh, well, funding, but also support and, and, and the ecosystem and platforms to collaborate together in, in this area, like the Alliance for, for Data, Edge and Cloud. 
Another one is the Gaia X initiative. You probably heard of, of this um, before, and I invite you to have a look at the Gaia X association and join the association and discover more about the, the architecture of the Gaia X project. This combination of services, infrastructure, and data that's going to be um, coordinated uh, from the from the Gaia X project. And well, um, from open source companies, it's going to be a huge opportunity to contribute to build um, cloud and edge ecosystems in Europe. For companies that are based in Europe, that's going to be uh, much easier to participate in some of these research and innovation programs. For companies, in, in specifically open source companies, to bring high impact use cases and applications to key industrial sectors and, and being able to leverage the, the research and development and innovation capacities in Europe and, and put together the, those um, innovation capacities and, and collaboration uh, by the sign that the open source companies bring to the table and also to open up new business uh, cases and spaces for, for collaboration among competitors, which is an important element that uh, I think as open source companies we can bring to, to this whole um, ecosystem, this whole uh, initiative. And just finally, just to, again to, to invite you to, if you're interested in the European market and, and what's going on in edge computing and cloud in, in Europe to join a number of um, uh, initiatives um, like uh, the Open Forum Europe, the Next IoT, some of them are supported directly by the Commission. Some others are um, mainly run by, by, uh, the, by industry. Um, and join these communities and start learning about the, the European context and the different projects. Some of them are a bit context, uh, technically speaking, and even the, the organization. But I think it's worth, if, if you're wondering whether it's uh, a good time to, to get into Europe, for instance, uh, uh, start your, your business in Europe uh, from an open source perspective and co cooperating with other companies. I think now it's the, it's the right time to do that. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that kind of brief, quick introduction to you with a lot of information. So I hope you have the, the uh, well, on the, on the slides, you'll have some, some of the links to explore some of these topics in more detail. And as I said, if you have any, any other question, just uh, feel free to, to, to let me know through the chat or later on by email. Thank you. Bye.